Thornwald system. It is named after Gustav Ludwig Thornwald, who was a German physician, 1843 to 1910. Thornwald system, also spelled as T O R N or T H O R N W A L D, is a common incidental benign midline nasopharyngeal mucosal cyst. The lesion is developmental and usually asymptomatic. In most cases, it is found incidentally, and as such, age of diagnosis represents age of imaging of the nasopharynx. Peak incidence has been variably reported between the ages of 15 and 60, presumably due to gradual accumulation of fluid following obliteration of its neck. That's a thornball cyst. A thornball cyst has an autopsy prevalence of approximately 4%, with no gender predilection. These incidences found at autopsy studies in 1950s and 60s differ from findings in a recent incident study using CTMRI, demonstrating incidence of only 0.06%. The reason for this discrepancy remains unclear. Thornwall cysts are almost always asymptomatic. However, if they become infected, they can cause halitosis or periodic discharge of foul tasting fluid into the mouth. Some are present with otitis media due to obstruction of the eustachian tube. A symptomatic cyst is also called Thornwall's disease. Thornwald cysts are classified as crusting and cystic. They form as a result of retention of the notochord where it contacts with the endoderm of the primitive pharynx. I repeat, they form as a result of retraction of the notochord where it contacts with the endoderm of the primitive pharynx. And this is believed to happen at about the 10th week of embryonic development. Closure of the orifice results in a so-called cystic type, while crust adhering to the orifice without closing results in the crust type. The cyst is lined by respiratory epithelium and accumulates with fluid with variable proteinaceous content. Inflammation can occur due to obstruction. Radiographic features. These lesions have a characteristic appearance and usually do not confused with more sinister pathology. Typically, they are well circumscribed with rounded lesions immediately deep to the mucosa. They are usually nestled between an anterior to the longus coli muscles and which they elevate forming a convex surface into the nasopharynx. These are variable in size and range from a few millimeters to a few centimeters in diameter but are typically 2 to 10 millimeters in size. CT. On CT, they appear as well circumscribed, low density, and are non enhancing. If the fluid is protein rich, then it may be hyper attenuating and even mimic a solid lesion. Similarly, MRI demonstrates these cysts as being well circumscribed with a thin wall. That is a thornwall cyst, which is a circumscribed rounded lesion immediately deep to the mucosa. They are usually nestled between an anterior to the longus coli muscles and they elevate the mucosa forming a convex surface into the nasopharynx. Thornwall cysts which are asymptomatic require no treatment. If it is required then de-roofing the cyst called marsupialization is usually sufficient and can be performed via a transnasal approach. The differential diagnosis includes adenoid tissue, mucus retention, nasopharyngeal carcinoma since 12% of nasopharyngeal carcinoma is a midline, minor salivary gland tumors, neurentric cyst and meningocele.
the very differential diagnosis for a Thornwall cyst.